What's up guys, Jay here and today is the first video in a series where we cover all the various mission types in Deep Rock Galactic. Today's video will cover the details of the mining expedition mission type. We're going to cover the basics of what the process of completing a mining expedition is like, the more intricate details and parameters that govern the mission type itself, and how you can be as efficient as possible with any of the classes and what they can provide the team on this specific mission. Finally, we'll discuss the overall difficulty of this particular mission type and how it compares to the other types in the game. So if you guys are ready, let's go over the details of by far the simplest mission type in all of Deep Rock Galactic Mining Expeditions. By the way, if you want to see more gaming videos, subscribe to the channel, that way it's easier to find my content. This is a simple mining mission. Deposit your quota of Morkite into the mule, and we'll send a drop pod to get you out. Good luck. So you're going through a mining expedition in Deep Rock Galactic. Well, thankfully, the mining expedition is the simplest mission type there is in the game at the time of making this video, so understanding the objective is pretty easy. Still, it doesn't hurt to go over the basic premise. Simply put, your goal in a mining expedition is to collect a required quota of a shiny bluish mineral known as Morkite. You collect this mineral the same as any other, then deposit it into Molly in order to extract. Once you collect the required amount, simply press the button on Molly to call for extraction, make your way to the drop pod before the countdown finishes, and then head home. The mission type itself is fairly linear in which you'll move from cavern to cavern collecting the mineral in question. Morkite is unique to the mining expedition mission type, so you won't see it in any other missions, making it pretty easy to spot. Good work. Objective has been achieved. Call the drop pod when you're ready to leave. As I said before, mining expeditions are an extremely simple mission type. There aren't too many fine intricacies regarding this mission type, however there are a few details that could be useful to know. The first thing to be aware of is just how much Morkite you will be collecting and how long it will take. These parameters are determined by the mission length and cave complexity, which can make the amount of Morkite needed as low as 200 or as high as 600, with the number of caverns needed to traverse being as low as 3 caverns and as high as 10 caverns. It's worth noting that the high volume mining expeditions can actually be one of the most effective missions in the game in terms of earning money and experience. So if you ever see a max level mining expedition with double XP on, the amount of progress you'll earn is insane. Another thing to note is that the completion time for these missions can vary drastically. It can be as short as 10 minutes or as long as 30 minutes, so just keep that in mind. Another useful thing to know is the way enemies spawn during these missions. Enemies spawn as normal most of the time, but every few minutes a swarm will spawn and give your team trouble, so just be aware of that. One last small thing to be aware of is that more kites slightly glows in the dark, so finding them in the walls, even without light, should be a relatively easy task. An extra miner has been assigned to your team. So now that you understand the basics of what a mining expedition entails and some of the finer details of what to expect from them, now it's time to talk about the kinds of utility that each class can provide for this mission type, as well as if any specific class has an incredibly useful position in regards to utility. In terms of absolute necessity, I would say that no one class is completely required for this type only because it's just so straightforward. However, I will say that the Driller has some interesting interactions that can make this mission even simpler. But with that in mind, let's go through each class and talk about the kind of utility they provide as well as if they do anything special for these missions. As I just said, the Driller has some very interesting utility on this type of mission. Now before I go any further, I just want to clarify something. Yes, I know I did not give the EPC nearly enough credit in my video covering the Driller. In my defense, the Driller is unfortunately the class I have the least amount of experience with. I am but a humble engineer main and did not truly understand the power of the Driller's legendary EPC and its thin containment field upgrade. This upgrade allows you to fire a charge shot, then immediately fire a normal shot at the charge shot to cause it to explode. Did you follow all of that? Basically, it creates an explosion, removing any terrain in the blast radius and causing any resources caught in the explosion to fall to the ground. This means you can mine minerals from a distance and in high volume, which can make short work of the Morkite deposits. Outside of that, the driller can also use his satchel charges to do a similar effect, and his drills can help the team get through the cavern system quickly and easily. The gunner also has some utility that he can provide when it comes to keeping enemies under control. As I said earlier, you'll encounter multiple swarms throughout the course of the mission. The gunner can help keep the team protected and covered during these swarms using his shield and heavy firepower. Also, his zipline can help his allies cross any large areas of the caves or reach any hard-to-reach locations where Morkite deposits are located. Basically, think of yourself as the bodyguard. Keep your allies safe while they collect the goods. 
The scout can work in tandem with the engineer in order to access those hard to reach Morkite deposits that are put way up high on the cave walls. Even without an engineer, he still brings a lot to the table. He can easily cover large distances in the cave system in a short amount of time and collect a large amount of Morkite. As always, he can use his flares as well to light up the cave so his team can find the Morkite, but remember that it also slightly glows in the dark. Don't let that fact discourage you from playing the scout on these missions because even without his flares, the scout has plenty of utility he can provide to the team. The engineer, like I said, can work very well with the scout to get to those hard to reach Morkite deposits. The simple platform gun grappling hook combo does wonders at achieving this. Outside of that, the engineer can work well with the gunner to help protect against the swarms. His sentry guns, proximity mines, and really any of his equipment can help keep an area under control until the swarm dies down. Just stay close to the gunner and support the scout when needed. And don't forget to put down platform bridges whenever it's needed. So to summarize what the classes can offer in terms of completing this mission type, the Driller and Scout should prioritize collecting the Morkite itself because of their high mobility and efficient mining. Meanwhile, the Engineer and Gunner should focus on clearing the path for them as well as keeping the bugs under control, since they have good amounts of area protection and bug control. Since this is a very basic type of mission, there aren't too many intricate 500 IQ strategies that are required in order to get through them efficiently. Now don't forget that there will always be secondary objectives to complete and potential other random events that might happen which could require your team to readjust. If the situation calls for it, you don't need to stay in these particular roles all the time. Other than that, like I said earlier, this mission type is very straightforward and simple. That's one for the books, retrieving escape pod. Now that you know the mechanics and parameters that govern the mining expedition, as well as some tips on how the classes can provide utility for them, let's talk about where the mining expedition stands when compared to the other mission types. To do this, I'm gonna give it and every other mission type we cover in this series three different ratings. One for its overall difficulty, one for how fun and enjoyable it is to play through, and one for its level of complexity. And we're gonna put them on a scale from one to five, with one being very low in that field and five being very high. Just to be clear, these ratings are only my personal take on this, so if you think it should be higher or lower, that's perfectly fine. First, in terms of difficulty, I'm going to give it a 2 because as I've said multiple times so far, this mission type is very simple. The only real way this mission could be hard is if the Morkite is in a tough spot and your team isn't well equipped to get to it. In terms of complexity, it's going to get a 1 for a similar reason. There isn't a crazy multi-step process needed to complete this mission, just mine, deposit, and leave. Finally, for its enjoyment rating, it's going to get a 4 because the fact the fact that it's so simple and doesn't require a lot of intricate steps to complete means it's a nice mission to go through when you don't want to focus too hard or rack your brain around anything too complicated. Now I guess there's a reason why this is the very first mission type you do in the game. So that essentially covers the basics of how to go through a mining expedition and hopefully now you have a better understanding of what to expect when going into them. So what do you guys think? Did I miss any details or do you disagree with my rating of it? Let me know down below in the comments and stay tuned for the rest of these mission guide videos. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Please be sure to give it a like because it tells me which types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next Friday for another video.